ho, Tudor-minded people. It's Philadelphia Carry for Tudor Time Machine. The word I share with you this week is vouchsafe. My friends, I have been most fortunate. Dr. John D., he who holds the title of Royal Astrologer to Her Majesty herself, vouchsafe to draw the chart of my nativity. This man is no ogler. The chart shows the state of the heavens at the time of my birth. Huzzah! Jupiter and Leo are well placed, and Venus, the goddess of love, is in alignment with Libra. This bodes well for my happiness in love. I shall suffer no elenginess. Jupiter is in the perfect trine, which is most favourable. The luminaries, sun and moon, the fixed stars, Regulus and Fortuna, are all auspiciously positioned. Using the nativity, the great astrologer can vouchsafe me my elections. These elections will guide the choosing of the most auspicious dates for the important occasions of my life. Oh, the heavens do vouchsafe me a propitious future. Vouchsafe. How now, Tudor Files? What think you? If you're new here, I'm Gage. I'm Jessica. And we're here with Philadelphia Carey for Tudor Word of the Week. Don't miss a word and listen to the Tudor Time Machine Story Project. So diverting. Subscribe on YouTube, ring the little bell, and give me a like. Tudor Files, thank you for listening. Every one of you has the wit of Rosalind and the heart of Cordelia. And thank you for writing to us and suggesting words. We love hearing from you. We love your feedback. We love suggestions. So keep it all coming. How do you spell vouchsafe, our Tudor word of the week, Philadelphia? It is spelled V-O-U-C-H-S-A-F-E. And vouchsafe means to grant, to bestow, or to divulge. And our use of the word comes from the play The Tempest by Shakespeare. But this word is used by the bard in so many of his plays. I read that it comes up 60 times over the canon, so it's a pretty common word. And I used to think it meant to promise, but that was sort of off the subtlety of this word. They always say you can figure out words from context, but sometimes you can't figure it out exactly. No, mm -hmm. that's right. So The Tempest features a character who some critics believe was inspired by your royal astrologer, Philadelphia. Dr. John D. I'm a little surprised you're into astrology and having your nativity chart drawn. Do you believe in all that? Believe in all that? My dear Gage, do not speak so lightly of a most important art. All the most prominent royals and courtiers have their nativity maps done. Really? You know, I think it was actually pretty common. I read that Henry the Seventh and Henry the Eighth were both very influenced by astrology. We hear a lot about Elizabeth the First being influenced by astrology, but it had been a thing in the royal court for two generations by the time she had John Dee there. Then as now, I guess we've had presidents who had their astrology charts done. Henry the Seventh hired the Italian William Perron author of many almanacs and pronostications, and Henry VIII hired Nicholas Kratzer to come from the Holy Roman Empire to be attendants on his court. But our Englishman, John Dee, outshone them all. And he worked only for Elizabeth. Not just for my queen. Dr. Dee cast horoscopes of both the Tudor sisters, Mary I and Elizabeth. Mary's chart predicted that her marriage would not be a happy one and that she would not live long. The horoscope for my dear Queen Elizabeth signalled that she would be a great queen and have a prosperous reign. Was Dr. John Dee not correct in his predictions? Well, yes, but maybe it was just a coincidence. Or maybe Dr. John Dee was just trying to curry favour with Elizabeth by making dire predictions for Mary. Coincidence? Say it not. And why would Dr. John Dee curry favour with Elizabeth when Mary was queen? Dr. John Dee was Mary's astrologer in 1555, three long years before she died. He went to prison for casting such a truthful map of her future. He is no miscreant, no hilding. Gage, you and I shall not brabble over the famed John Dee. 
He, a brave man of honesty and piety, vouchsafed truly that Mary Tudor's reign would not flourish. He did not dissemble. He was a man of piety? Do you mean like Christian piety? How does that fit in with astrology? Reading the heavens is a most holy act. It makes clear God's will. The spheres speak the language of the angels. Wow. Okay, well, you are a true believer. There are more things in heaven and earth, dear Gage, than are dreamt of in your philosophy. Ah, you quote Hamlet at me. But in King Lear, Shakespeare has Edmund say, This is an excellent foppery of the world, that when we are sick in fortune, often the surfeits of our own behavior, we make guilty of our disasters, the sun, the moon, and the stars, as if we were villains on necessity, fools by heavenly compulsion, knaves, thieves, and treachers by spherical predominance, drunkards, liars, and adulterers by an enforced obedience of planetary influence, and all that we are evil in by a divine thrusting on. We'll have to shelve this debate, but many Shakespearean scholars believe that the character of Prospero is based on John Dee, who Shakespeare might well have met personally, but I mean, he certainly knew of him. John Dee was super famous at this point. There's just no doubt that at this time, John Dee was considered one of the greatest alchemists, mathematicians, navigators, and all around geniuses in England and Europe. Shakespeare's audience might well have recognized Dr. D in his character Prospero. I think it's hard for us in our super empirical scientific age to understand that in the Tudor period, there was not a hard line between science, mathematics, and navigation, and things like alchemy and astrology and the supernatural. Because it wasn't until the 18th century that the Catholic Church denounced astrology. In the Tudor period in the 16th century, some of the most renowned astrologers in Europe were monks and priests. So the real John Dee and the imaginary Prospero are men of science as it was considered in the 16th century when it definitely had a component of spiritualism and magic in it. The Tempest takes place on an island where Prospero, once the Duke of Milan, lives with his daughter Miranda after he has been usurped by his brother and shipwrecked on said island. Prospero is basically a magician who can summon fairies and visions and who can control the elements. But Prospero's brother, Antonio, and other of Prospero's enemies from Milan are on board a ship. And Prospero creates a storm and they all end up on the island. Ferdinand, Antonio's son, is separated from his father in the shipwreck. And he comes upon Miranda all alone. And I think everybody can guess what happens. He is amazed <laughs> by her beauty. What does he say, Philadelphia, when he sees Miranda? He says, most sure the goddess on whom these heirs attend, vouchsafe my prayer, may know if you remain upon this island, and that you will some good instruction give how I may bear me here. My prime request, which I do last pronounce, is, oh, you wonder if you be made or no. And of course, Miranda also falls for Ferdinand. She doesn't say, who are you? And, and she doesn't say, I'm not a maid. I've gotten down with others before. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> anyway, there's a lot of magic and pageantry and comedy and tragedy and subplots. But essentially, Prospero is pulling the strings on all of his enemies. He's a great manipulator. And at the end of the play, they're all at his mercy. But he chooses forgiveness over revenge, agrees to a marriage between Ferdinand and Miranda, and his brother Antonio restores him to his rightful place as Duke of Milan. In the face of all this forgiveness and reconciliation, Prospero renounces his magical powers. He renounces his library of magical books. He breaks his magic staff and order is restored. I don't think I would give up my magical powers to be a boring old Duke of Milan. Huzzah! Now, in that, my dear Gage, I vouchsafe to agree. But give heed to the files. Be a witty wordsmith. Bring some 16th century source to your vocabulary with vouchsafe. 
Listen in next time. Don't miss a word. Subscribe on YouTube and give me a like. Thank you.